Hello everyone, Colton Tackett here on Sonic and OKKO for Next Level 20 here. Welcome to another video and um yep, we're gonna do some more Chevrolet audio cassette stuff, finally. So um before I start, I just wanna tell you um um before I tell you about what tape I got in the mail today, um, that I'm gonna play for you. Um I just wanna tell you I ordered a Chevrolet tape a few weeks ago. It was on the nineteen eighty four Chevrolet Cavalier, but when I checked to see what the tape looked like, for some reason the tape looked like it broke. I don't know what happened, but whoever sold it really, really needs to know how to freaking do things right on eBay. So, uh, my dad returned that tape. So, uh, I got a different Chevrolet tape on that day. And um, and this time I wanted the 1993 Chevrolet S10 pickup cassette. And here it is. The 1993 Chevrolet S10 pickup. So um, I just want to tell you, um, this tape is in brand new condition and it, it has never been opened um, for like 27 years. I was like, like this tape is from 1993, so I believe it has not been opened in like 27 years. So that's that's a long time, isn't it? So because of this, I'm going to eventually like, uh, going to open it. So we'll see what's, okay, so it's, I'll, I'll be right back after I open it. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I, I just recently opened this tape. I got it out of the shrink wrap. And it, um, so we're going to show, we're going to tell you what it looks like for the, the list. So for side one, I'm going to read this. Um, side one is introduction to your new 1993 S10 pickup. Side two has the options, child restraint procedures, off-road driving, trailering tips, tilt wheel and intermittent wipers, Cruise control, four-wheel drive systems, manual and electronic, air conditioning, uh, AM, FM stereo radio with six scan and digital clock with stereo cassette tape player, AM, FM, AM stereo, FM stereo radio with six scan and digital clock and stereo cassette tape player with search, repeat, and graphic equalizer, block heater, and fog lamps. So we're going to play side one for this video. And then maybe in the next video after this one, we're going to go with side two. So um, these 1993 Chevrolet tapes have a sticker label instead of an ink label. So yeah, um, I want to play this tape for you guys. So let's, let's put this tape in the player and get ready. So there... There is a YouTuber that has this tape. I think his name is Hardcore Garage. If you want to check out his video on the 1993 S10 pickup, you go. You can go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. And also, there is a YouTuber who had a 1993 Chevrolet tape. It was on a sport van. YouTube user was VHS Reviver. I'll put a link in the description for the video for the 1993 Chevrolet sport van cassette. So yeah, I'll put both links to the things I'm talking about. So anyway, um... 1983 S10 pickup. So I'm going to play the whole first side and the whole second side just so that way Hardcore Garage can understand. So yeah, Hardcore Garage, if you're watching this, I hope you guys, I hope you enjoy it. Especially you viewers out there. Alright, got the flashlight ready. Alright, and let's play it. 3, 2, 1, play. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Chevrolet S10 pickup. This audio presentation offers information on the operation of your standard equipment and accessories you may have added. It also offers some helpful tips for an S10 pickup owner. Side 2 of this tape offers tips on the operation of the special options you may have purchased, four-wheel drive applications, as well as information and cautions when trailering with your vehicle. In order to gain maximum benefit from this information, we suggest that you listen to it in your new pickup. New pickup. The presentation calls out only a few of the operational features of your new pickup. Complete and detailed information is presented in the owner's manual, which you should read and keep in your vehicle. To help you enhance the future performance and economy of your pickup, let's go over a few tips to follow during a break-in period. First, we recommend that you limit your speed during the first 500 miles to a maximum of 55 miles per hour and be sure to vary your speed during this break-in period. This procedure allows many of the engine components to seat correctly for future performance. Second, 
avoid full throttle starts, and whenever possible, hard stops, especially during the first 200 miles of driving. Your pickup is equipped with rear-wheel anti-lock brakes, which operate in the two-wheel drive mode on 4x4 models. Rear-wheel anti-lock brake systems are designed to minimize rear-wheel lockup during braking by automatically modulating the brake pressure. As a special note, you may feel a slight pulsing on the brake pedal during a brake application that would cause the rear wheels to stop rolling. The anti-lock feature is designed to help you maintain control of the vehicle. When a brake application is not enough to cause the rear wheels to stop rolling, the brake system acts in a conventional manner. Now let's look at your instrument cluster. There are several warning and indicator lights in your instrument cluster display which you should always monitor. When you turn the ignition to the start position, all your warning and indicator lights will briefly illuminate. This is simply a bulb and system check. After a few seconds, all the lights will go out. If a light remains illuminated, it could mean a system malfunction. Your new truck is equipped with a brake warning indicator light. If the brake warning light remains illuminated or comes on while driving, it could indicate a possible malfunction of the conventional or rear wheel anti-lock brake systems, in which case you should carefully pull off the road since it may take longer to stop the vehicle. This light also illuminates if the parking brake is not fully released. If this light is illuminated, check that your parking brake is fully released. The release is at the lower left of the instrument panel. If the light still remains illuminated, see your Chevrolet service department as soon as possible. Your service engine soon light monitors the computer command control of your new S10 pickup. If this light comes on intermittently or continuously while driving, the vehicle can be driven in most cases, but you should visit an authorized Chevrolet service department as soon as possible to have the computer command control system checked out. Three gauges you should pay particular attention to are the oil, voltmeter, and coolant temperature gauges. Operating your pickup with any of the gauges reading excessively high or low could damage your engine or engine components. On the two-wheel drive EL pickup, the fuel tank capacity is about 13 gallons. On other S10 models, including four-wheel drive EL models, the fuel tank capacity is about 20 gallons. Be sure the octane rating for fuel you use is at least 87. And if you use a methanol or ethanol fuel blend, be sure to see the owner's manual for proper mixture recommendations. To start your engine, just rotate the ignition key to the start position. Don't depress the gas pedal. You could flood the engine if you depress the gas pedal during starting. If the engine does not start in three seconds, depress the accelerator pedal to one quarter throttle and turn the key again. If the engine still does not start, it may be flooded. Wait about 15 seconds for the starter to cool, then depress the gas pedal to the floor and hold it there while cranking the engine for a maximum of 12 seconds. This should clear the engine. As a special note, don't crank the engine for more than 15 seconds at a time, and be sure to wait 15 seconds before trying again. This will help prevent damage to the starter. Section 2 of the owner's manual offers detailed information on starting, while Section 6 offers additional information on fuel, oil, and fluid capacities. Your trip odometer records mileage for either record keeping or monitoring fuel economy. With the standard instrument cluster, press the button in the speedometer face to reset the trip odometer. With the digital instrument cluster, press the trip button and then the reset button to start a new mileage measurement interval. With the digital instrument cluster, you can alternate the mileage readings between the total miles driven on your vehicle or the trip mileage by pushing the trip button. By pushing the EM button on the digital instrument cluster, you can display all your instrument cluster readouts in either English or metric settings. If you have a manual transmission, there is a shift light on your instrument panel. When this light is on, shift your transmission to the next highest gear if weather, road and traffic conditions permit. Following the recommendation of the shift light will provide optimum fuel economy. With the digital instrument cluster, the panel display has a tachometer. As a special note, operating the engine with the tachometer reading in the color-coded high-speed area could lead to serious engine damage. The headlights and taillights are operated by pushing the switches to the left of the instrument cluster. High and low beams of the headlights are controlled by the turn signal lever. The wheel above the light switches controls the light intensity of the instrument panel when the parking or headlights are illuminated. It also turns the interior cab light on or off. The emergency or hazard warning flashers are controlled by a button underneath the ignition switch. To engage the flashers, push the button in. To disengage them, pull out on the collar surrounding the button. 
for your convenience and accessibility, the fuse panel is located beneath the instrument cluster on the driver's side. Refer to Section 2 in the Owner's Manual for additional information on lighting features and controls, while Section 6 shows a photograph of fuse locations. The 5-speed manual transmission and the automatic 4-speed overdrive transmission are designed to make your driving as easy as possible. For the manual transmission, read Section 2 of the Owner's Manual for tips on the operation of your transmission and clutch. For the most favorable performance of your automatic overdrive transmission, there are some things you should be aware of. The Circle D overdrive position allows the transmission to automatically choose the appropriate gear for load and driving conditions and should be used in most driving situations. The D drive position should be used for increased performance when towing a trailer or driving on hilly roads if you notice excessive shifting between gears. The D drive position should also be used on slippery surfaces to avoid an unexpected downshift. When road conditions improve, shift back to the circle D overdrive position. You'll find that the second gear position provides additional power for hill climbing or engine braking. In addition, if you have the 4.3 liter V6 engine, starting in second gear will limit the torque to your drive wheels for better traction on slippery surfaces and minimize wheel spin. The first gear position is for maximum engine braking at very low speeds like when you're driving or towing a trailer down a steep hill, or maximum engine torque when driving through deep snow or mud. When you leave your truck, place the automatic transmission in park or manual transmission in gear and make sure you set the parking brake located to the left of the brake pedal. To disengage the parking brake, use the release at the lower left side of the instrument panel. As a special note, if you have the manual shift four-wheel drive system, never leave the transfer case in the neutral position when parked, since the vehicle could still roll even though the automatic transmission is in park or the manual transmission is in gear. Section 4 of the owner's manual offers additional information on parking and leaving your vehicle. If you have air conditioning, its operation is discussed on side two of this tape. On non-air conditioned models, your new pickup is equipped with easily operated ventilation and heating controls. To allow outside air into the interior, simply place the heater control in the vent position. Additional air vents are located in the kick panels. These are opened or closed with handles on the vents. At the top of the heater control system, you'll notice the heater fan control. There are two slide levers on your heater. The right slide lever allows you to select any of the modes indicated to the right of the lever. The left slide lever allows you to adjust the temperature setting. For control of the interior airflow, place the right lever next to the mode you wish to use. The defrost mode directs most air to the upper defrost outlets. The heater mode directs most air to the lower heater outlets for maximum heating. The vent mode directs outside or outside heated air through the instrument panel outlets. Using this position is helpful for defogging your side windows. Your electronically tuned AM or AM FM stereo radio has some very convenient functions like speaker balance and bass and treble adjustments. If you have a cassette player or a cassette player with graphic equalizer, their operation is discussed on side two of this tape. On the AM FM stereo, the seek button allows you to seek out the next available station. The scan button allows you to briefly sample all the radio stations available. If you find a station you enjoy, quickly tap the scan button again to lock that station in. To preset 4 AM and 4 FM stations, first find your favorite station by using the tuning knob or seek and scan controls. Then to lock in that station, press the set button and within 5 seconds, one of the numbered buttons. If you wish to preset more than 4 AM or FM stations, you can combine the numbered buttons to expand your preset station selections by pressing two adjacent buttons simultaneously, like buttons 1 and 2, 2 and 3, or 3 and 4. To set your electronic clock, you must use the Set, Seek and Scan buttons with the AM FM stereo radio, or the Set, Hour and Minute buttons with the AM radio. When you push the Set button, a set indicator light will illuminate. Within 5 seconds, press the Scan or Hour button to set the correct hour. By pressing the Set button again, within 5 seconds, you can use the Seek or Minute button to set the minutes. If you plan on using your pickup with a slide-in camper, Section 6 of the Owner's Manual offers information regarding cargo and gross axle weight ratings and the center of gravity location for your vehicle. 
As a special note, be sure to secure all cargo prior to driving. Cargo weight should be distributed over the rear axle and centered to maintain the correct center of gravity. If you're going to pull a trailer, see section 4 of the owner's manual and be sure to listen to side 2 of this audio cassette for trailer towing information. Which we will do soon. If you need to tow your pickup, see section 5 in the owner's manual. When it comes to maintenance of your new pickup, different driving situations require different scheduled service intervals. There are two different maintenance schedules for you to follow, depending on how you drive your new vehicle. For example, Schedule 2 generally applies to highway-type driving, where the engine is warmed up to normal operating temperatures and there is minimal stop-and-go driving. On the other hand, Schedule 1 is applicable when your vehicle is used for short trips, towing a trailer, driving in cold or dusty situations, frequent off-road use, and frequent stop-and-go driving. Be sure to read the maintenance schedule, section 7 of the owner's manual. This section will help you select the correct maintenance intervals and procedures for your driving conditions. By following the appropriate maintenance schedule, you'll help preserve your investment in a quality vehicle. One very important self-maintenance procedure you should do is check the oil level every fuel fill-up, preferably when the engine oil is warm. For more detailed information on checking your oil, using the correct weight or viscosity of oil, inspecting the coolant, washer and transmission fluid levels, along with other self-maintenance procedures, read section 7 in the owner's manual. Your spare tire is stowed underneath the vehicle. If you have a compact spare, remember that this tire is only for temporary use. You should reinstall the regular tire as soon as possible. As a special note, you should occasionally check the air pressure in your spare tire. Be sure to read Section 5 of the Owner's Manual for the operation of your jack and the correct procedures to remove or replace a tire. The Owner's Literature found in the exclusive Chevy S10 pickup portfolio contains important information. In the portfolio, you'll find your Owner's Manual, warranty information, a separate warranty for your tires from their manufacturer, and spaces for business cards of key contacts at your Chevrolet dealership. If you have any additional questions after reviewing the literature, please call our toll-free customer assistance center at 1-800-222-1020. In addition, your vehicle is covered by Chevrolet's 24-hour roadside service. By calling 1-800-243-8872, which is the same as 1-800-CHEV-USA, you'll have access to emergency services like towing, tire changing, locksmith services, and more for as long as you own your pickup. Your vehicle has many other standard features designed to make driving a delightful experience, so take some time to explore the interior and exterior of your new pickup. We would like to remind you that on side two of this tape, you'll find additional information and operational tips about the special options you may have purchased to customize your new pickup and information on the use of child restraint devices. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this audio presentation. And again, congratulations on your purchase of your new Chevy S10 pickup. Okay, looks like side one's all done now. So, um, um, side two, side two is going to be on the next video. So, just wait for the, wait for the tape to finish spinning. Wait for it. Okay, so that's it. So anyway, um, we will see you in the next video for side two of the 1993 Chevrolet S10 pickup. This is Colton Tackett on Sonic and OKKO OK Fanatics Velvet 20 signing off. See you in the next video. Peace out.